Hi, Dennis. How are you? Thank you for coming. Hi, Katrina. Doing well. How's your day going? Good, good. Thank you. Hello everyone, we will start in around four minutes. Thank you for coming. Hi, Sean. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we'll wait another one or two minutes and then we'll start. I'll start introducing you to the audience. Um, so, yeah, thank you and nice meeting you here. Hi, Gilbert. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi, hi. Yeah, hey, uh, Dr. Uh, Chen, thank you so much for making it. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, nice to meet you here. <laughs> I hope your Friday has been going well. Yes, thanks. Yes. Thanks, Catherine, and thanks for the invitation, yeah. Yeah, it's an honor to have you here. Um, we can start slowly, and I guess people will take a, little, a few minutes to come in, but uh, I can start introducing you, and, um, and then um, Dennis here, he started I hope that's okay with you. We started. We wanted to start. We started doing this this week. Um, that we ask uh, the scientists a little bit, a few questions, so that the audience will get to know you a little bit. Um, also to promote you as a person, as a scientist. I hope that's fine with you. And then um, the stage is yours to give a summary of the of your work. We, you don't have to stay within this uh, publication. I know you have a lot of very relevant um, uh, studies that you've done related to COVID. So if you would like, you can, you know, give a broad overview of your work. But um, yeah, thank you everyone for uh, joining our Science Society room today. Um, let me introduce to you Dr. Sean Chen. Um, it's a great honor to have him here. Um, let me give you a little bit 
uh, background information. Dr. Shen Cheng is at Cambridge University in the United Kingdom. He's a postdoctoral research associate there. And um, he did his um, um, education at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And um, his um, main work is about um, building analyzing data and visualizing data from um, hospital-based uh, records to support clinicians and patients-led research. And he evaluates the effect of interventions on patients, and he explores the potential risk and protective factors of health service utilization and status. So I think it's um, a very important field um, especially uh, with the recent pandemic, but also for other broad um, health issues, related issues. And his top areas of expertise are COVID-19, dementia, and schizophrenia, and other. Um, and he co-authored um, 37 series articles in the past years. So uh, yeah, it's a great to have you here, Dr. Chen. Thank you. And Dennis, go ahead. Thank you, Katerina. Thank you, Dr. Chen, for honoring us with your time and presence. Um, we'd like to ask, what was, what was the pathway to you, for you to become a scientist? What led you to science? Uh, um, sorry, uh, can you repeat the question again? I, I think I missed something. Sure, sure. Uh, how did you end up being a scientist? What was your pathway? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, what, the, what does it mean the pathway? Yeah. So um, when you began, what, was your, what were your first experiences in, on your, your path to becoming a scientist that you are right now? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, I think, uh, I don't know how to answer this. I, I think I just uh, come to the Cambridge for the research after I graduate. Okay, that is also that is also a, a valid answer. Thank you, Katerina. Back to you. Yeah, um, Dr. Chen, if you would like to, um, yeah, give us an overview of. What Yes, thanks. Uh, so the next uh, I will begin or next or we, I will um, do what? I'm, I'm not sure. We can uh, we can begin with your presentation. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And thanks for the invitation and thanks for the for the time. Yes. Today I will give a give a brief talk on on the publication we on the paper we published and the topic is the association between lithium use and the incidence of dementia and its subtypes. And the first is the background. Uh, dementia is the leading cause of death and disability in elderly. And there was about 15 million people had dementia worldwide in 2015. And uh, this number is projected to be tripled in the next 30 years. So preventive, uh, preventive interventions that could delay the onset of dementia even modestly would provide a major public health impact. And it has been estimated that delaying the onset of dementia by five years would reduce the pre prevalence and the economic impact of dementia by 40% uh, uh, Lysine has been proposed as a potential therapy. It has positive effects in cell and animal models of dementia. And there is evidence for its neuroprotective effects from experimental research and from clinical studies using brain imaging. Two meta-analyses and, uh, and one uh, RCT study has also suggested that uh, lithium has beneficial effects on cognitive performance in people with mild cognitive impairment 
and uh, people with Amazon Amazon diseases. However, uh, it is unclear whether lithium can delay the onset of uh, dementia. So in this study, our primary aim was to access the association of lithium use with the uh, with the incidence of dementia and and its uh, subtypes. The subtypes we focus include the, the Amazon disease and the vascular dementia. And our second aim was to examine the degree of association by the duration of lithium treatment. Um, before we started the work, we hypothesized that lithium would be associated with a reduced risk of dementia attempts. And uh, this association uh, would be seen in both short-term and long-term lithium exposure. To, do, uh, to explore the question, we performed a retrospective cohort study uh, using data from, um, from, the, from electronic uh, clinical records of Cambridge. The database is called CPFT. CPFT provides uh, mental health surveys to a population of about uh, 0.9 million people and, and covering both ur urban and rural areas. Um, so our, our studies, uh, our study examined those refer referred to the CPFT at some points to secondary care for mental health services. The mental health uh, records con con um, contains patients' information recorded by the physicians during their routine treatment, uh, including lack structured data, age, sex, migration status, ethnicity coded diagnosis and uh, some unstructured data, like free text notes. Um, we ex for this study, we examined the data between the 1st January 2005 and, uh, 21, uh, and 31 December 2019. For the cohort of patients exposed to the lithium, each patient's uh, origin time was defined as their earliest recorded exposure to lithium. And for the exposed, uh, exposed uh, cohorts, uh, non lithium users, the, uh, their origin time was the least CPFD registration data or, or the 1st January 2005. Uh, the follow up was until to the, was until to the patient's final records. Uh, death or the forced records of dementia, whichever occurred first. Well, in this study, we only included the patients whose age was uh, 15 uh, or over at the baseline and had, and had at least one year of follow up. Uh, in this study, we excluded the patients uh, who has a pre existing diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment or dementia. Uh, uh, we also added close the patients, their follow-up time was very small, like small than, uh, than one year. And the outcome, uh, next is the outcome. The outcome we focused is the, yes, is the dementia. The dementia was diagnosed and classified based on the ICD-10 code. And for example, the, the code F00 is for arm disease. The code F01 is for vascular dementia, F02 uh, and F03 uh, is for dementia in other diseases or unspecified uh, dementia. G, G30 is, is also for AMA disease. And so from the database, uh, we can mm, extract the outcome. Uh, for the exposure to lithium, the exposure to lithium was judged based, judged based on patients, uh, whether patients were prescribed lithium or had a theorem lithium level, uh, uh, level of 0 0.3, 0 0.2 or, 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 or higher. The duration of lithium, uh, uh, the duration of lithium exposure was calculated as the range between the earliest and the, uh, and, and the latest date of lithium events. And uh, uh, for the data analysis, uh, we also include some co-founders, co we also uh, are, are called uh, covariance. Uh, 
uh, we investigated uh, several social demographic variables uh, like age at baseline, sexual, marginal status, and ethnicity. We, all, uh, we investigated the uh, smoking status. We also investigated the, the co-prescription and the comorbidities as a potential confounders and treat them as a binary uh, time independent uh, variables. And the medication and uh, the, the medication of the comorbidities variables was uh, uh, we considered uh, include uh, whether the whether the pe people take the antipsychotics, uh, whether the people have dementia, uh, whether the people have alcohol related disorders, whether the people have um, uh, many of of bipolar disorders, uh, whether they take. Uh, whether they have diabetes and whether they have hypertension, whether they have central vascular disease, and all these uh, was uh, confounders we need to control. It. And uh, for the uh, model we used, we used the Cox's proportion harder model to examine the uh, association between the same exposure and the risk of uh, uh, dementia. And to, for, to further control for the possible selection bears between the same exposure and uh, non exposure, the Cox model uh, were adjusted by the inverse probability weights. The, uh, the, in, the inverse probability weights were deprived from the probability scores generated by a, a binary logistic regression. And um, we also conduct uh, a, series, a series of sensitive analysis uh, to check the robust of our results. The sensitive analysis uh, we, we conduct uh, include the use a longer criteria to identify uh, common, to identify common maintained medicines, or uh, use a longer follow-up time to as close uh, patients registered in the CPFD temporarily. Uh, we also uh, 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 we also add uh, we also add and do a sensitive analysis by uh, add closed uh, patients with uh, recurrent depression and uh, and uh, and for the for the and uh, for the results and finally we followed uh, five hundred forty eight patients exposed to lithium and about uh, 30 thousand patients and exposed to lithium. Uh, when we compare the basic uh, uh, information between the two cohorts, we found that there was some difference in the baseline of patients between the lithium user and the lithium non-user. Patient, uh, patients in the lithium user group were more likely to be married, more likely to be current or former smoker, more likely to have uh, uh, more likely to have used the uh, anti uh, more, more likely to have uh, comorbid depression, more, more likely to have uh, BP, um, bipolar disorders, more likely to have uh, hypertension, more likely to have uh, central vascular disease, and more likely to have uh, diabetes. After we, after we adjust the data um, by the uh, inverse probability with the baseline characters between the cohorts, were well balanced except for, except for except for the comorbid BP bipolar disorders. Mm. After after we control the confoundings, yeah, uh, include the soil demographic, smoking status, and other medicines or other comorbidities, uh, we found compared compared with the patients. Who never take lithium, exposure, exposure to lithium was associated with a lower risk of dementia. Uh, and this uh, and this result with we, we was consistent in sub in the subtype, include the uh, amyloid disease and uh, vascular dementia. Uh, we also analyzed the data by duration of lithium means cut the means categorize the uh, uh, the lithium into one, one year, one to two year, two to three, three to four year, like this. And the analysis uh, uh, and the results we found suggested that uh, 
So the listen was uh, uh, the listen protects effects in in dimensional was significant was significant at short term. Uh, at, uh, for for listen you know, less less than one year and uh, and the long uh, long term for listen use uh, more than five years but for the but, but the effects at the uh, intermediate duration were not significant but uh, this result may may because of or simple or simple sense is not very big as especially for the listen user and uh, and as for our sensitive analysis, uh, all the sensitive analysis confirmed or uh, confirmed all results, and that listing was associated with a low lower risk of dimension and its subtypes. Our findings, uh, our findings, our findings, uh, our findings supported the hypothesis that listing is associated with a reduced risk of dimension and its subtype. These associations are generally. Uh, consistent with the previous studies of clinical data from uh, from countries like Brazil, like the U.S., like the Denmark, but uh, but the but the results is not consistent with another uh, with another U.K. study and the one study uh, conducted in Taiwan. The difference may may be because of the simple selection, the study design, and the confounders we confront uh, we, we controlled. Uh, even uh, even those uh, uh, the significant results, uh, but but uh, our analysis have some limitations. The first one is the handling of bipolar disorders. Bipolar disorders is a significant risk factor for dementia. Uh, in practice, uh, in clinic, this theme is primarily used for bipolar disorder, but also as uh, augmentation therapy for recurrent depression. And uh, to test the so to test the robust of our results, uh, we we needed to we needed to conduct two sensitive analysis uh, to check the, to check the robust of our, our results. And uh, and all uh, and all sensitive analysis uh, confirm the results. And another limitation is that all simple sets of patients use listing was was smaller. Was small, and uh, this limitation uh, was specifically reflected by the uh, by the weather confidence interval of all results. And uh, thirdly, the mental disorders and uh, physical uh, and the physical comorbidities we have controlled may uh, may suffer from undercoded, and uh, this possibility always exists with the use of uh, clinical data. And uh, uh, and uh, can bring some emotional bears. Uh, for uh, in our uh, in our study, the main answer to the question is uh, what is the dose response association between listing and the incidence of dementia, and uh, this is the question uh, in the most uh, in the more focus uh, in future study. And. I think our result, uh, for our result, uh, caution should be taken when when people try to draw in conclusion from our study to the junior population, because our uh, be, uh, our cohorts differs from the junior population as our database was uh, was of patients treated for dementia conditions for, for mental health uh, conditions. Uh, we can. We cannot exclude the possibility that uh, the listing effects uh, will be a different, uh, uh, different one in the general populations. And so, uh, in future, more studies involve the general populations are also needed. Uh, yes, uh, this is a very brief introduce, and yes, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for this great introduction. Um, this is such an important uh, study and work that you do. So thank you for that. And um, I want to ask first if Dr. Shar, Serena, or anyone here on the stage has a question. Uh, please go ahead. Um, I know that Tony Kendall had 
also a few questions who is in the audience. Please raise your hand if you want to ask them personally or if I should ask them. Uh, so yeah, please go ahead. Everyone. Dr. Shah, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Katerina and uh, Sean, for the, I mean, very good paper. I mean, I was not able to go through the whole paper because that was just abstract part, but I was just wondering, uh, your data just makes sense to me because even for some of the patients with the Parkinson's disease, I, I mean, I remember back in time, we had some patients that experienced the same situation and they were under medication with the lithium. And uh, we had a hard time. And for the period of the time, we were able to control the situation, but somehow the dose changes was required. So even from that perspective, your data and the result makes sense to me. Thank you for sharing. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, good questions. Um, yes, at the beginning of a study, we, uh, Yes, we try to uh, include uh, as much as possible subtype of uh, dementias besides the Alzheimer's disease of vascular dementia. Also, include, uh, there are also some type of uh, dementias like dementia with uh, Lewis bodies and dementia with Parkinson's disease. But uh, uh, finally, we don't we don't um, uh, analyze this because the simple size is 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 too small. So. So, so, uh, so for the for the for other uh, type of dementia, I think we still need most uh, more data from what is that beyond the beyond the, beyond the Cambridge. Um, did that answer the question? And um, yeah, I'll um. Dr. Tony Kendall, he asked me to ask his questions because he is um, having background noise where he is. So um, he asked if you also look for um, in if you uh, take into account adjustments for um, for bipolar affective disorder, also in the general population um, or if you looked for other cofactors in the in the general population or in any of your group's um, studies, mm. uh, yes, uh, yeah, yes, uh, good question. Yes, uh, in in all analysis, uh, yes, the bipolar disorders uh, we need uh, is a big confounder for analysis because in clinic, this same was primarily used for. Uh, Use for bipolar disorders. Um, so we so we did uh, so we did uh, two consecutive sensitive analysis to check the robust of all the results. Uh, the first one is treat all the lithium user as bipolar disorders, and uh, and the second one is uh, is as close the as close the uh, the the. The, the patients with recovering depression, another 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 indicator of a listening user, to check uh, and both confirm our results, and uh, for the for the uh, results to the general populations, and we we, we don't have the confidence because, uh, because, uh, because the patients we focused on the has, uh, has a lot of has a, uh, has a kinds of mental disorders and the, 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 uh, all of these are the risk factors for 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 dementia. So the listing may be effects uh, may be effects for people with uh, bipolar, for people with uh, current recurrent depression, but we are not sure whether the listing was in fact was for general population. And uh, so more, more analysis is needed in future. And um, he is also asking what the duration and the dosage of uh, lithium treatment was uh, included in the study. Um, and if there would be enough data to, or how much data you would need to make a dose dependent curve, basically. Um, 
uh, yes, uh, for the duration, yes, uh, you know, on, uh, um, uh, for, 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 for the duration in, in, in all on data in, in all analysis, we categorize the duration of listing into less than, less than one year, one, one to two year, uh, and two or two to three year like this, uh, because there is, there is no, there is no standards of how to, uh, uh, how, how to group the listing duration. So we just, um, use one year as, uh, as, as, as the standard. We also make a sensitive analysis. Uh, you use you use two year as the, uh, as the standard to 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 count to to group the uh, the listing duration and uh, and the, and the, it also confirm all results. Um, for the simple sense of uh, of those uh, response and. Uh, 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 I think uh, I think it it need uh, I think it need a uh, calculation based on uh, based on the form for based on the formula to calculate the simple size. But for all analysis, I think but for all data, the simple size is enough. But the the the, the bigger challenge for all data is that there are there are a lot of missing value of. Uh, uh, of uh, of the of the listing dot age, so uh, so we uh, we failed to for the explore the dot relationship. Uh, I think maybe uh, um, I think uh, I think this problem may be common for other for other uh, for for other sets. So if future if future researchers want to explore this uh, relationship, uh, explore the dot. This um, response relationship, um, besides the besides the choice of RCT study, I think maybe uh, maybe redo the analysis by involving um, involving of multi sets uh, is possible. A question: Is there any insight into whether the mechanism is uh, lithium acting directly on the neurotoxicity of the plaques, or, or is it an uh, indirect effect? Is there any mechanism, um, mechanistic insights? Uh, as far as I know, as far as I know, when I read the paper, uh, for uh, first, I'm, I'm, uh, I, uh, I, I just know the epidemiology. Uh, I just know the ep uh, epi Demiology. Um, I'm not the um, biomedicine. I'm not a professional in biomedicine, so uh, actually I don't know the, the the behind the mechanism. And maybe these questions uh, need answers from um, people uh, in other in, in, in other subjects. Sorry. Yeah, um, thank you so much um, for these answers. Uh, Eric, did you have a question, Victoria? Uh, no, not at, the, not at the moment. Yeah, um, I think it's really interesting how um, across um, such a, I mean, the study is pretty big compared to other studies, how you could, um, have such a stable result that that's not very common is it to have um across the population um such a stable result in um this reminds me of a study that i read about um that in texas apparently there is there are a few places where um the lithium in water that naturally occurs there. So it's in the drinking water, it's relatively high. And um, there was a, um, a study done that um, there are less mental health issues, including suicide rates are low, uh, significantly lower in places where uh, lithium concentration in the, the water is relatively high. Um, is that something, um, that um, that you would consider in studying as a follow-up to um, like how 
uh, nutrition wise or um, the natural lithium intake um, uh, changes has an effect on maybe dementia in the future or is it not um, or is maybe the findings so low or so variable that it's not realistic to get very robust? Um, uh, I think, uh, I think the next, uh, I think the next plans are uh, not depend on me. It depend on my, uh, my leader. So, uh, uh, currently, I, uh, yeah, currently, I, I hope our team can have the the chance to do uh, RCD study to check the, to check the, to check the. Uh, to check the clinic evidence, but but I'm not sure. Yeah, interesting. Um, I know you we didn't um, really discuss this beforehand, but I know you have also um, papers that looked at um, long term mortality following COVID uh, infection. Would you be also fine to maybe share a little bit of um, the COVID related studies and also the mental health outcome of the COVID uh, vaccination study? Would that be fine with you? I could share the link here with people. You could give us a short summary, maybe. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, if, if people interested in that, in that, in that those, yes. Yes, I can share. Yes, for the dementia and the COVID. Yes, we should have a plan, have a ongoing plan. Yes, we we are trying. Uh, at the moment, we are studying that we are explore the long term effects of COVID on people with dementia, and uh, and uh, the, the 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 data was still under analysis. Yeah, I posted the link here of um this paper where um long-term mortality following COVID infection people with severe mental illness. Um, I don't know if you can give us a short um, summary of this paper. Uh, okay, for a moment, uh, let me have a... Oh, I, I thought um, mm. you, it's, it's fine if you don't, but I just want to mention it that you um, uh, yeah, uh, yes, maybe next time. Uh, I think I oh. don't uh, make a preparation for that paper. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think you, you do a really um, interesting job at uh, looking at clinical data in general and um, looking for what um, what actually helps. So which are the other projects you're currently working on? Uh, so you have the COVID projects and the lithium dementia projects. Um, and your profile is also mentioning that you're working on schizophrenia. Is it the similar, is it also lithium uh, related? Um, sorry, I I think I, I don't get the questions because the net, the, the internet was interrupted. Just to know, can you repeat the question again? Sorry. Yeah, just updated the link back to your um, to your paper. So um, in your profile, it's mentioned that you also can you hear me better now? Just yes, it's better now. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so um, that you um, also uh, study schizophrenia, is um, is that study also uh, lithium related? Um, do you also look at um, what the effect of lithium has um, on schizophrenia long term? Uh, I th uh, the the work on our hands is. Uh, uh, is dementia related? Uh, at the, at the moment, uh, we are planning to do some work uh, also related to uh, uh, lithium, but uh, uh, but it's still in in prime step. So, well, I, I'm not sure. Um. 
Um, yeah, thank you. Does um, anyone has um, has more questions related to this study? So the patients, the 29,000 patients in the uh, cohort um, that um, has been treated. Um, so uh, where is it all from the from the clinics you um, you work, or is it all UK based? Like, what's the um, where do the patients come from, um, or is it um, also from other countries patients? Uh, is the uh, the data is come from the uh, is from the clinical e records? Uh, how to say that and. Uh, um, when 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 patients visit the doctors, uh, their information will be will be stored 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 in the computer in the internet, and the and the patients will be asked whether they uh, they, they want to share their the information or their data to researchers, and uh, and in the UK, and the the, the 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 digital data the digital data the digital data related to the Clinical records is very well de is well de developed so so we can uh, we can apply for the access to this data this database after we get get the uh, as an essay, uh, as, uh, ethical extra, uh, ethical approval. And do you think, based on your study, it would be helpful to uh, prescribe uh, lithium at a certain age? in people that have in the family dementia a lot in the family as a preventive um, care um all that uh, i uh, i think all, all that they is just the is just the primary analysis they uh in the way of clinic they are still a long way to do Especially the especially the uh especially the evidence from R C T study is is necessary. So, um, so I, uh, so I think we just uh, all, all start all study or just give some 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 clue for future researchers. Uh, cannot uh, you can cannot be used as a final uh, evidence. I think. And uh, did you see, so you, you didn't see differences of the effect between male and female, or, or did you? Because um, we know that at least Alzheimer's um, is, um, has a higher rate in female versus male. Um, was the effect the same? Uh, sorry, uh, 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 I think I just know, uh, maybe. I mean, I misunderstand the questions. And um, for the uh, for the female and the, uh, for the male and the female, uh, we included uh, this factor as a conf confounder, but we did we um, we do not check the uh, the the sub effects by by the by by, by gender. Uh, maybe it's a good idea, uh, but the, but 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 these questions need more. Need a, uh, need, need, need a bigger simple size and and uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, and I'm not sure whether our team will uh, our team have the enough demo size to explore these questions. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's interesting. It would be really great to see um, the future um, of the study. So are you are you going to continue to analyze uh, the data in these ways or are you moving on to another study? Um, uh, yes, uh, I think I, uh, in the future, in the next step, I, I still I, I will still focus on the dementia. Um, uh, at the moment, uh, I'm I put a special focus on the dementia with rich bodies, and so I hope uh, I hope I can make more contributions to this group of patients. 
Yeah, it would be really interesting to to continue to follow these patients and look at post-mortem data. Is that something um, that is usually um, or other patients that are included in the study, will they be available to um, to look at the brain post-mortem if there is a difference between the group that took lithium compared to others? Uh, sorry, uh, I think I missed the question again. Can you re repeat it again? Yeah, sure. Um, so is, is it like, are you planning or um, other patients that um, are part of the study are there going to be post-mortem analysis of the brains of these patients? Because it would be really interesting to see if the damage um, reflects um, the, the data that you show, if they have really less um, Alzheimer or dementia related um, cell death in the brain uh, in the patients that take lithium versus in the patients that don't take lithium or is um, the lithium act enhancing just maybe the rest of the brain that's still left over basically you know the two the two hypotheses would be possible uh, that it prevents cell death or that it just enhances the brain regions that are still uh, functioning Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I think you you read some interesting topics. Uh, I think I need uh, I need some time to think and how to come through these ideas. Um, because uh, before before I, I I I I don't know I, I don't have a think on that. I'm sure I'm not sure. Uh, yes. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's fine. You know why? Um, I can explain maybe a little bit more why why I think both hypotheses are possible. There there were studies uh, years ago uh, on monks and nuns that have uh, that had dementia, and um, compared to general population, although they had dementia, they were still able to perform their everyday tasks versus people that um, lived in um, homes or had like a lot of support, uh, they, they were not able to perform, uh, to take care of themselves at all. And, and they looked later at the, um, the brains and actually in both groups, they saw extensive uh, cell death or loss. Um, so a lot of lesions, but in in the monk and nun group they could still um, take care of themselves and perform a simple everyday tasks and the reasoning was that you know the brain that was still uh, there like the brain regions that were still there they had to just take because they never stopped performing these everyday tasks compared to the general population that usually gets taken care of so that's why I think um, it would be interesting to see how lithium is acting there. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Um, uh, yes, yes you, you just gave me uh, a good spark. I think uh, maybe the data, uh, as far as I know in UK, there, there is a database called the UK Bear Bank. Maybe uh, the, the database cover both uh, uh, junior population and the clinical patients, and they also have the data of brain imaging. Maybe this database uh, support the uh, support the approach of your uh, your your ideas. Um, but the but, but, but the database is expensive, as far as I know. Oh, that's great. I mean, you know, I would love to see what, I hope, yeah, I don't know, I'm very curious right now to see what you come up with. Uh, it's just very interesting if lithium, because that will give us uh, clues if lithium can actually prevent the, 
the Alzheimer or it slowed down the Alzheimer's disease itself, or it or if it just enhances the um, the existing neur the neurons that still um, that still survive. So I'm very curious about that data. Uh, you have a really interesting job. Katarina, it's interesting you raised the point of this monk study versus general population. Given that um, monks and nuns have probably generally a daily practice, it does raise the issue of whether the daily reinforcement of pathways through practices, physical practices, mental practices, may also be a factor in the equation, obviously understanding that biology can be a much larger factor in the equation. Yes, I, I agree, yes. So I had a question, Dr. Chen. Um, you had mentioned earlier in the talk that there is a projection of a 3x increase in um, dementia over the next 30 years. Is that exclusively COVID related or is there any indication as to why that projection is that number and not a different number? Uh, sorry, um, uh, what projection? Um, sure, I'll repeat the question. You mean the number of dementia? Yeah. The number of dementia? Yes, yeah. You had said the dementia is, is predicted to increase by 3x in the next 30 years. Uh, why, why is that? Uh, I, uh, I think I just uh, get to the information from a published paper, uh, 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 just from a reference, but uh, but uh, at the moment uh, I can't remember the details. I think I I, I don't know how to and, and, and I can't answer the the detailed information. Yes. I think I think maybe it's better to to back to the reference for the for the for the, for the details. I'm not sure is a great scientific answer. Certainly. Um, and a different question. So for is there any information you can share with us about the percentage of COVID patients that are having dementia like symptoms? Um, mm, I, I think at the moment I can I, I don't know how to say that because uh, the, uh, because I don't uh, at the moment, uh, though I as per the dementia, uh, 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 though as per the data uh, among dementia patients with COVID, COVID, with COVID, but I'm not sure. But 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 I don't I don't have the data of the of the of the. Um, People with dementia, or with other people with 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 the COVID, so I can't answer uh, the the the, the, the personal age the, the question you you raised. Okay, um, and then the last question on this point: Are you aware of clinical trials involving lithium and COVID patients? Sorry, can you repeat again? Are you aware of any clinical trials that are looking at the question of the impact of lithium on COVID dementia or any sort of COVID related um, uh, conditions? We hope, mm, we hope, but, but at the moment, uh, I think I, uh, um, uh, I, I'm not sure because it's it's not just uh, just just I said before. It's not dependent on me. It's dependent on my later and whether we can get the funding support for the future for the future for for, uh, for the analysis. Mm, because uh, because uh, because uh, uh, because uh, RC study like this will be very expensive. So so it's dependent on whether we can get the funding support. That is always a major factor. I do. Uh, you'll you'll find that I'm I'm rather adamant that the uh, funding for science should be increased overall. Were there 
other questions from anyone else? Sean, well, those were some hard hitting questions. Uh, uh, very conference like. Uh, so um, perhaps for the future for our speakers, uh, we should uh, give them a list of questions that we may or may not want to uh, ask so they can be uh, uh, a little bit um, um, more able to provide references. I too had those kinds of questions. Um, if uh, if uh, Dr. Chen uh, would uh, be willing to perhaps uh, come back in the future and give us an update about some of this stuff, I think it's an exciting uh, field and an exciting problem because it is a problem that, you know, the essence of you eventually fades away, but it happens so gradually that it's a loss that perhaps not sufficiently many of us appreciate the, you know, if there is an increase for whatever reason, it's quite important to address that and find out as soon as we can. So I very much appreciate Dr. Chen coming here today, and I would like to thank you for joining us and giving us your presentation. Yes, thanks. Yes, if I have the chance, I think I'm happy to share all results. Yes. Great point. Thank you so much. Any other questions from uh, Katerina? Go ahead. Um, no, I just wanted to also um, thank you. And I know from the audience, we uh, have a few questions regarding um, what the lithium basically how it works in the brain that it helps against dementia that is not known yet um and hopefully in the future with analyzing more data sets maybe from post-mortem brain uh, analysis we will know more um but i think um what dr sean um is doing by analyzing more systematically hospital records and to support um, what actually like to support the data based um, approach um, to planning what intervention actually help which ones are risky and um, and uh, which have protective um, factors is, uh, is something really important and we definitely need more studies like these. Um, yeah, and Dr. Shan also did studies um, with COVID and mental health related um, disorders. So I would love to have you back to present maybe one of your COVID related um, papers here. Um, the I hope we can invite you. Hi. Yes, thanks for the, yes, thanks for the invitation. Yes, uh, if yes, if we we can find our time, yes, and if the the time is uh, is allowed, yes, we yes, I can share. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have been talking for one one hour. If um anyone, I don't or to uh, take too much of uh, Dr. Sean's precious time. So if anyone has any uh, last question, please go ahead. Um, yeah, just flash your mics. If not, we, we will, no? Okay, if not, we will. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Um, Chen. I will email with you maybe to, um, to invite you back and talk more about your other studies. Uh, I think they are very important for public health. Thank you for your work and thank you for sharing your time with us. Uh, this was really great. Thank you, yes, thank you. Yeah, and everyone, if you like uh, discussions like these and um, interact with the actual scientists that uh, did the research uh, please follow the science society and come back um, we will have more i guess invited speakers coming uh, next week uh, tomorrow i planned on having like a general science news update um, one that i think was really important that can, a few were really important also related to the current conflict and one was that uh, AI experiment generated over 14,000 
people said they call a bioweapons and more. So it will be more round table discussion, updating on what, what came out recently in the science and tech world. Um, so we can then decide uh, maybe which guest speakers uh, to invite based on the news and, and uh, what rooms to plan for and um, discuss about uh, new research topics. And um, on Sunday, we have a weekly science society recap uh, plan from now on. So if you missed for any reason, uh, the guest speakers talk from that week, we will give a short recap and uh, give you another opportunity to listen to it um, in a summary, in a summarized way and ask questions about it. And um, yeah, and next week we'll have um, more guest speakers on how to, a new method to train creativity, why evolution favors symmetry, a mathematician is coming and, um, and also biologists. So, yeah, come back. Thank you so much for joining us today for the discussion and a special thanks to Dr. Sean Chen for his uh, great presentation and for his wonderful work. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, everybody. Uh, take care and have a wonderful weekend. Okay, I'll close the room in three, two, one. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone.